to St. Chad's Cathedral in Birmingham. I want to invite you to join me during this year of faith on a journey across the Archdiocese in company with Blessed Dominic Barbary. We've chosen Blessed Dominic as our patron for the year of faith because he was so concerned in his own time when he came to England to share the Catholic faith with the people whom he worked among and whom he served. He is a good patron for us and we remember among the many other things that he did that he received Blessed John Henry Newman into the Catholic Church, a great symbol of how the example of a good and holy life can lead others close to Christ. I would like to invite you now to join me here in the cathedral and to come to the chapel where we have a painting of Blessed Dominic. And I'd like to tell you a little more about his life there. You may be interested to know how Blessed Dominic Barbary, an Italian, came to England to serve the Catholic Church here. Well, let's go right back to the beginning of his life. He was born in the year 1792 in rural Italy, near Viterbo, in the centre of Italy. He was born into a farming community and at the very early age of six, he had the great sadness of losing his father. And of course, his father's death meant that his mother had to bring up the family single-handedly, a large family of brothers and sisters in this small farmhouse. They had to work very hard together. They learned what it was to share and to look after one another. And then another tragedy befell Dominic. When he was nearly 11, in 1803, his mother died. And at that time, he began to grow much closer to Mary, the mother of the Lord. He dedicated himself to her as his mother, and he learned to call her Mama. I'd like you to look here in this chapel at the painting of Blessed Dominic, which is above the altar. Just underneath the painting is a relic of Blessed Dominic something to remind us of his presence with us and his prayers for us. You'll see that Blessed Dominic is dressed as a priest. He's wearing the habit of the Passionist Fathers, the religious order founded in Italy, which he joined as soon as he could do so. To the left of the painting, as Dominic raises his hands in prayer and in blessing, you'll see a small statue of Our Lady, Mary, the Mother of the Lord. When he was 18, Dominic felt called to become a Passionist, but there was a great problem. You see, he was in love with a young girl in his village. It was a struggle, but by the time he was 21, he knew what Our Lord wanted of him, and he decided to enter the religious order. In August 1814, he joined the monastery in Vatralla in central Italy, and he began his formal training as a Passionist. During his first year in the monastery at Vatralla, something very important happened, something that was going to change Dominic's life for the future. He went into the chapel, and he was praying before a painting of Our Lady. As he prayed there, he received a message that he would be called to England, to leave his beloved Italy, to go to England and to preach the Catholic faith there. It was to be several years before this ambition and hope was fulfilled, not in, in fact until 1841. But in the years in between, Dominic served the Passionist Order as a teacher, he formed those who would follow him as Passionists, and he was a leader of his own community in his province. All through the years, Blessed Dominic never forgot his love for England, 
and he prayed for England every day. Eventually, in 1841, his hopes were fulfilled and he had an opportunity, through an invitation, to come to England. He made the long journey by train and by boat across the English Channel, eventually coming to Birmingham, where for a few weeks he settled in St Mary's College in Oscott. But after that time, he moved to Aston Hall, near Stone in Staffordshire. And there he was to serve the little community of Catholics which grew over the years. Although he faced opposition in Stone, his ministry eventually won people over. I'd like to invite you now to join Bishop David as he explains more about Blessed Dominic's life in Aston and in Stone. And then later to accompany Bishop William to Littlemore in Oxford as you hear about an important meeting and a day that changed our Catholic Church in England and Wales through the ministry of Blessed Dominic. Welcome to Aston Hall. It was here in February 1842 that Blessed Dominic Barbary established the first Passionist Monastery in this country. He had arrived initially in November 1841. It was cold, it was foggy, and on November the 5th, of course, he had to face the prospect of those bonfires, the burning of effigies of the Pope. What a first introduction to this country it must have been. He returned to Belgium to come back here again in 1842. This is the chapel of Blessed Dominic Barbary. It was here that he celebrated Mass and at the rear of the chapel there is an image of Blessed Dominic Barbary and a relic. Here we have significant relics from Dominic Barbary, a letter that he wrote and from the time when his body was translated northwards, uh, a relic from his habit and also wood taken from the coffin in which he was initially buried. In these grounds on Corpus Christi in 1844, Blessed Dominic Barbary held the first Corpus Christi procession. It was attended by over a thousand people, but significantly, well over half of them were non-Catholics. It was repeated on the same day, on the next day, and on that occasion there were a thousand non-Catholics attending and as many Catholics. The number of non-Catholics attending is a great tribute to the evangelical zeal of Blessed Dominic Barbary and the love which he came to hold in the, in the opinion of the surrounding people at that time. This is the mausoleum at Aston Hall and it was here in 1849 that Blessed Dominic Barbary was laid to rest. He remained here until his body was translated to Sutton St Helens in 1855. Let us just take a quick look inside the mausoleum. Across from the remains of the moat here in the grounds of Aston Hall is the church of Holy Michael the Archangel. Here we have 
have a statue which reportedly was brought from Belgium by Blessed Dominic Barbary. And in the chapel you can also see further indications of the presence of the Passionists here in this parish in the Passionist symbol which can be seen uh, in the stained glass window which is in front of me now. As you come into the house here at Aston Hall Hall, one of the first things that greets you is a portrait of Blessed John Henry Newman, who of course was received into the church by Blessed Dominic Barbary. There is a further portrait of Ignatius Spencer, a convert who worked together with Blessed Dominic Barbary during this period. In November 1842, Blessed Dominic Barbary established a chapel at Stone, the nearby town. And as he walked to, 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 to say Mass at that centre, he was pelted with stones and mud, but his reaction was to pick up the stones, to kiss them and to put them into his pocket. In the grounds of the Dominican convent here in Stone is the Chapel of St. Anne, built by Blessed Dominic Barbary in 1844. Here in the Chapel of St. Anne in Stone, built by Blessed Dominic Barbary, we see the chair in which he used to sit to hear confessions. We also see the altar where he celebrated Mass and above that altar the crucifix which he held in his arms as he was preaching. This chapel also served as a meeting point, a schoolroom for the young people of this early Catholic community who came here for instruction and for catechism. In those early days before the chapel was built Blessed Dominic Barbary hired a room here at the Crown Hotel in Stone. Such was the initial hostility that while Mass was being celebrated, the local people would sing as loud as they could and would whip their horses to create as big a diversion as was possible. But Blessed Dominic Barbary would continue praying the rosary in their midst. And of course, in later times, he was much more favorably received by the local populace. Welcome to Littlemore. My name is William Kenney. I am one of the Auxiliary Bishops of Birmingham, and I look after this region of Oxfordshire where Littlemore is. I'm also a Passionist, and it was to this place in Littlemore that Dominic Barbary came one evening and received Cardinal Newman into the church, the man we now know as Blessed John Henry Newman. He had, Dominic had come to England from Italy at about 1840 or 1841, there is some dispute about the date, and had brought with him the Passionist congregation of which, as I've said, I am a member. We're going now to go into the library, which was the first place that Dominic came to when he arrived at Littlemore. Dominic was a popular preacher, although he never really learnt the language and it was always difficult to understand him. But Cardinal Newman knew of him because he had said some years previously to 1845 that the true Church of Christ was the church that went into the industrial slums of England barefoot to preach the gospel. That was literally what Dominic and the other Passionists had done. And so when Newman was deciding that it was time that he should come into full communion with the Catholic Church, it happened that Dominic was on his way here to visit one of Newman's companions. And he came that night here. He travelled on a stagecoach on the outside, because that was cheaper, and it had rained heavily. And he was soaking wet when he arrived here, and Newman and his friends put him in front of the fire here in this room to try and dry out. 
Newman had already decided that he would that night make his confession and be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. And it was on that night that he began his confession. He continued the following day and was then received into the Catholic Church. And, Newman, and Dominic celebrated that first Mass for Newman's first communion in the Catholic Church on this writing desk which we have here. And it is, of course, still preserved as the place where one saint said Mass and received another into full communion of the Church. Here we have some of the things that Blessed Dominic Barbary left behind him. It's the Passionist sign, which every Passionist wears on their breast. It is the uh, belt around his habit. The one of the crucifixes he probably used when preaching and also some of the bones from his hand which are preserved here. Dominic was a popular preacher. He came to this country expecting to be able to convert the upper classes because it was those people he had met in Rome as they travelled through Rome during the 1820s and 1830s. He discovered very quickly, however, that that was not to be, but discovered also that the poor were very receptive to the gospel as they came into the industrial cities of England and lived very, in very poor conditions in the slums of those cities. It was also there that he met many of their children to whom he became a great friend and was always or always seemed to be popular with the children. Perhaps to some extent his lack of English helped because he at times was as helpless as they were. But he certainly loved them very much. We've now come into the chapel at Littlemore, which is still used by the Sisters of the Spiritual Family of the Work for their devotions and daily Mass. And here above the altar we have the crucifix which belonged to John Henry Newman and is still part of the furnishings of this chapel. We also have a picture, the most familiar picture, of uh, Blessed Dominic. It's taken from a contemporary drawing of him which is no doubt very like him. And behind you can see the shadow of the statue of Our Lady holding the child because his full title as a Passionist was Dominic of the Mother of God. Dominic was only spent two nights in Littlemore before he continued on his journey, preaching as he was all over the country, but mainly in this, our Archdiocese of Birmingham. Welcome to the Shrine of Blessed Dominic Barbary here in Sutton St. Helens. My name is Father Julian Booth and I am a priest of the Diocese of Birmingham working on the Year of Faith Committee with responsibility for making Blessed Dominic Barbary known throughout the diocese. To the left of me here we have this beautiful mosaic of Dominic here kneeling on England and now we're going to go inside to visit his shrine. Well, here we are now in the Shrine Chapel of Blessed Dominic Barbary. You see under the altar here the body of Blessed Dominic, which was brought here in 1855 and reburied in this new shrine in 1973. His full title, Blessed Dominic of the Mother of God, Passionist, and the dates of his life, 1792 to 1849. This chapel is very special because not only does it contain the relics of Blessed Dominic, but it also contains the bodies over there of Father Ignatius Spencer and Mother Mary Joseph Prout. Father Ignatius Spencer was a contemporary of Blessed Dominic 
a convert to Catholicism who became a Passionist priest and preached the gospel throughout England and died a very holy death. Mother Mary Joseph Prout here was a woman who heard Blessed Dominic preaching whilst in Stone in Staffordshire and became a Catholic and went on to found the Sisters of the Cross and Passion to carry on the work of teaching the poor in schools. And this church has been prophesied to one day it will be the church of three saints. The windows in the church speak very beautifully of the life of Blessed Dominic and his companions. Over there we see Dominic receiving a vision of Our Lady, praying before Our Lady. We see the picture of Father Ignatius Spencer by the crucifix, him pointing. And over there, the picture of Mother Mary Joseph, the founders of the Sisters of the Cross and Passion. And furthermore, there is the picture of the founder of the Passionists, Saint Paul of the Cross, having a vision of the Passionists working in England. Here we have some visible reminders of the presence of Blessed Dominic here in Sutton and the things he would have used. At the top of the cabinet we see the profession crucifix which Dominic would have worn on his habit, would have received when he made his vows. Also we see quite important relic is the relic of his altar stone in which he offered mass and also the relic of the permission letter he had to come and say mass in England when he came. The box in which they are contained is also used, was also used by Dominic as a makeshift tabernacle. And furthermore, there's one important relic, visible reminder again of Dominic, which was the sign of the Passionist, which he would have worn on his habit. There are also smaller relics of his signature and some of the vestments which he would have worn during his time in England. And they all remind us that Dominic was a living person who indeed came to these shores to teach us the faith. But there's one more um, relic which I want to point out to you, which gives a human side to Dominic, and that was his snuff box, because at that time many people took snuff. And it's rather amusing to think of Dominic traveling around, possibly with that snuff box, tucked in the folds of his habit. One of the most important things to remember about Dominic is that Dominic was a living person. He lived many years ago, but his memory lives on, and that is the legacy of the saints and the blessed, that their memory lives on. And we can ask them to pray for us and for our special needs. And so now I'm going to ask you to join in a prayer to Blessed Dominic for our schools and for our archdiocese during this year of faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed Dominic Barbary, pray for us. You may like to know where you can see some visible reminders of Blessed Dominic today in our diocese. There are a number of places, different places across the diocese, where we've been richly blessed to have relics tangible reminders of this holy man. At the Convent of Mercy in Handsworth, Birmingham, there is Blessed Dominic's chair in which he sat to give retreats and talks to the nuns. At the Oratory in Birmingham, in the shrine of Blessed John Henry Newman, there is the Passionist sign which Blessed Dominic wore on his habit together with other relics of Blessed John Henry. We are fortunate in the Archdiocese to have some of the letters that Blessed Dominic wrote. For example, his letters to the Benedictine nuns at St Mary's Abbey in Colwich. 
These are carefully preserved by the sisters of Colwich. In Reading, on the site of the Railway Tavern, a blue plaque marks the place where Blessed Dominic was received as he was dying. He died there on August the 27th, 1849, at 3 p.m. And we now keep his feast on the 26th of August every year. I hope you've enjoyed your journey so far. I thought we'd end our journey here, again in the cathedral, thinking about Blessed Dominic's life. He had a great love for children, you know, and also had a tremendous sense of humour. He used to make other people laugh through his practical jokes. But he was also a person of very great kindness. He preached with simplicity and kindness to others. But he was generous too. A story is told of him once of how he was giving out apples, but he kept the biggest apple of all for the smallest girl in the group. Blessed Dominic spent his whole life in the service of others. And that is one of the reasons why he is such a good patron for us during the year of faith. When he was only 57, on the 27th of August, 1849, he was travelling by train from London and he had a terrible heart attack during that journey. He was taken off the train and given a bed in the railway tavern in Reading. And after great suffering, later that day, he died to take his place and with the company of the saints in the kingdom of God. Blessed Dominic would surely have been welcomed then by Mary, the mother of the Lord, to whom he had had such a devotion for all of his life. Here in the cathedral, just above the archbishop's seat, is the coat of arms. To the right of the coat of arms, you'll notice at the very top, there are three blue fleur-de-lis on a golden background. The fleur-de-lis is the sign of Mary, the mother of God, but here, it is a reminder of the importance of Blessed Dominic Barbary to us and to our Archdiocese. I hope that you've enjoyed this journey around the Archdiocese in company with Blessed Dominic. We ask his prayers for all of us, for our schools, for our families, for our parishes. Blessed Dominic of the Mother of God, Pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb.
Yeah. 